Welcome to the B2B Digital Marketer Podcast, a podcast helping you to end your struggle with digital marketing, helping you to pave a new and better path to target and capture your ideal customer. Each week, we teach you how insiders and experts debunk the dreary and become engines of innovation. Now, here's your host, Jim Rembach. Okay, B2B DM gang, uh, I have somebody on the show who is going to help us actually implement more P2P in our B2B. Uh, Frank Soma is actually the author of the book, B2B is Really P2P, and he has some skills and expertise in what is now a very prevalent part of digital marketing that oftentimes we may have viewed as obscure uh, or maybe not even part of digital. And we're, that's why we're going to have such a fantastic discussion today uh, about being more connected to your uh, folks. So, Frank, if you could share it with us a little bit about, you know, your background and your connection with B2B and your passion for it. Oh, sure. So, um, I've spent a, a career in sales leadership, entrepreneurship, managing people, selling myself directly. And what I found is that the differentiator always is me. And what I mean by that is not that, oh boy, I'm some exceptional sales guy with these mad skills. It's about the connection that I make with the person on the other side because selling happens when there's trust and when you remove as much risk as possible from the buyer. And I find that that's an individual trait that makes one person succeed uh, in sales far, far better than some other folks that you know, think that it's, it's about what they have to say, you know, this, this crazy um, kind of uh, archetype that we've had in, in movies over the years and books about the silver tongued devil who talks people into things and this is considered great salesmanship. It's not, it's, it's about listening, it's about understanding, it's about gathering information and it's about offering great solutions and help to people that need it so that both of you can benefit. Okay, so but what you're talking about there for a lot of people may be a, a disconnection between the whole marketing and lead gen and demand gen and then getting into the actual, you know, sales funnel aspects of being able to obtain and, and hopefully retain a customer. So you yeah. and I had the opportunity to chat a little bit before uh, we rolled uh, the, the video and recorded about this blurring of digital. So give us a little bit of insight in, in how do we actually do the lead gen and demand gen where maybe we have a sales force and so that identity component's a little tough uh, to be able to doing and creating that connection. Well, I mean, you got to insert yourself into everything you do. So whether you're, you know, writing a landing page or whether you're creating an ad in LinkedIn or, or Facebook, you've got to, you've got to be personal. I think the, the differentiator is being personal. People are we're sorting through so much information now. There are so many things coming at me all day, every day, that how, how do I distinguish one from another? And, and it's about bringing forth the personality either of the product or yourself or hopefully both in your offerings. I mean, you know, I'm a big proponent of personal relationships and understanding how to build rapport. And having said that, I do ads and posts on Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook every day because it's a huge component of what I have to do. But hopefully what I'm presenting to the world in all of those ads, et cetera, is a bit of me and my philosophy and what differentiates me and my product. Well, okay. So obviously the whole passion and the connection piece um, you know, is, is really what we're talking about here for you and what you excel at and what you help other people to excel at. Uh, but how does something called NLP, which no, we're not talking about um, a natural language processing for some of those that are in the contact center space. We're actually talking about neuro-linguistic programming. How does that tool help you to accomplish what you're talking about? Well, it's, you know, NLP is the understanding of communication. So Bandler and Grindler, the guys who invented the science, uh, they basically broke down nuances of human communication. So as I said, Bandler and Grindler, you know, I know we're on a podcast and, and uh, you know, people are not watching this, but your head nodded up and down in a yes motion. So what's happening in that moment is I'm understanding that you want to match me. And if we were just having an ad hoc conversation, you would add something that you know about NLP when I stop speaking in that moment because your head is doing this. So I understand you're matching. 
you're finding similar situations. This is what NLP does is it figures out uh, languages that people work in. So from a digital marketing perspective, it could be understanding your audience and what kinds of language do you want to have? Do you want to have commands embedded in the things that you do? Do you want to have an away strategy? Are you working with, you know, you, you A, B test things a lot, right? So is it, you know, if you do this, you will reap these wonderful benefits, which is a toward strategy in NLP, or if you don't do this, this horrible thing will befall you in a way strategy. And what works better on a particular market at a particular time? Well, and, and there's, there's some core components or elements of, of NLP that uh, you and I even talked about it being interesting how um, it gets adopted. Um, it also gets adjusted on the, cause some of the, really the major marketers that we even have in North America um, have taken NLP constructs uh, and used it for their own gain. I mean, one of the biggest ones um, that I think, I don't know who hasn't heard of Tony Robbins, um, mm -hmm. you know, has used is in order to be able to grow, you know, his empire. <laughs> um, okay. So when you start talking about NLP, um, neuro linguistic programming, the connection, the rapport and doing all of those things, you know, where do you see, a lot of uh, opportunities that may not be totally clear that could help us to be a disruptor. Uh, clarify more from what you want to understand there, because I'm not really following where I should go with that question. Oh, it's a great question. Um, so when, when we start talking about the opportunities that exist that you see people not taking advantage of, right? Um, that could cause us to be a disruptor in our entire, you know, B2B digital marketing, you know, process or framework, where is it? You know, I'm not sure. I think, um, you know, in different businesses, there are going to be major disruptions. I mean, if we look at what's happened in the world and what's happened in, in Amazon, for example, was uh, one of the greatest examples of, of life-changing disruption in all of our lives. And, I, and I'm not sure where the next, where those kinds of disruptions will come from, the next big things. But, but what I do understand is that through the use of understanding how other people express themselves and understanding the map that they use, you can dis differentiate yourself and your product by realizing the language inside the language, which is, you know, the NLP model. So it's respecting that other, part, that other person, uh, respecting their map of the world, but anticipating that a certain type of language will work better with this type of person than that type of person. Okay. So for me and talking about when I, when I meant disruptor, I didn't mean some like massive, um, you know, high level, you know, okay. uh, disruption, but I mean me, okay. I want to make a difference. So like, for example, I think now you even came out with some uh, virtual, you know, solutions and, mm -hmm. and coaching tools on zoom, you know, like, Hey, right. a lot of my work is now on zoom that wasn't there before. And so how do I perform well and make that connection and build that rapport and do all that? Uh, you know, that's critically important. So how can I, as an individual, as a B2B digital marketer, maybe disrupt, you know, what mm -hmm. I've been doing and then also that helped me stand out so that I can build a sales funnel and make more sales. Well, and I, I Okay, so there's a couple of different things that I think folks can do. It's One is you've got to insert yourself into everything you do. So I, I may have even said this earlier, but you are the differentiator. As a marketer, you're the differentiator, and you've got to believe that, and you've got to be that, you've got to embody that in order to make changes. So it may be, I, I believe, you know, video is now much more important than anything else. So if I'm going to, there are, there are programs like BombBomb, for example, and I, and I think uh, Gmail has their own proprietary one where I can send a video message in an email, embodied in an email, without having to click on something and go to YouTube, but it just opens up and you've got me speaking. If that's appropriate for you, practice and do it. You know, figure out, get, get the right camera uh, so that you look okay on screen. Don't just use the laptop camera if it's no good. I mean, I understand there's some great MacBooks out there, but... You've got to, you know, pay attention to the sound, pay attention to what's behind you. Video is a great medium for a marketer to use because it gets, it gets people to see the nuances. I mean, if you think back, um, what was the study in UCLA? It, uh, it was uh, Meherbin. So Meherbin did this great study in UCLA. It's famous today, right? That uh, 60, no, 58% of our communication is body language. 30-something percent is, is tonality and only 7% is the words we use. So look at the disadvantage that puts you at 
when you've only got one component of that. Whereas if you've got the ability to get the other part of it, body language or tonality, those are huge components. I could say to you, when, when, when you ask me, you know, if my wife came in right now and said, hey, how's the conversation with Jim going? I could say, it's fantastic. Or I could say, yeah, it's great. Jim's great. You know, and, and the difference is the t- tonality. I could say, it's great, or yeah, it's great. And this is the basis of sarcasm, right? It's saying something with a tonality and a body language that defies the actual definition of the thing you're saying. So as many of those tools that you can bring to bear as often as you can bring uh, video and voice inflection in, and even in your writing skills, being able to write in a way that reflects that kind of tonality, which you can do with various things like caps and bold and punctuation and so on and so forth, try to bring personality in, I think. Well, I, okay, so you said something quite interesting when you talked about that study uh, from UCLA and you talked about how the text is with only 7%. So then I would have to potentially say, well, Frank, well, well, then why are you doing the NLP stuff? You should put all your efforts in just doing the video. But I think what you're saying is that it all has to line and be congruent because otherwise you have massive disconnection. Absolutely. A big component of NLP is, and, and, and this doesn't necessarily fit our topic super well, but a big component is watching. So I've had situations where, you know, I was back on my heels in a, in a large selling situation and you've got to listen really well, but what is, what, what is listening? It's watching eye cues and color changes and breathing changes. And, you know, I've, I, 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 even things like um, how people's feet are aligned, like all of those things matter when you're in a one-on-one personal situation. So we're, super challenged when we're just on the phone and even more challenged when we only have an email to be able to bring as much of that stuff to bear as we can. Um, there's a great uh, telemarketing coach in the UK named Anthony Steers. And he said to me, we met a couple months ago, and he said to me, when I'm on the phone as a telemarketer, I close my eyes and picture the person on the other side so that my, my communication is not just single, single dimension. And I thought that was a really interesting take on Anthony's part. And, and it, it, it really works. Well, you know, and some of those things I think we, you know, we, we had talked about is that the lines have now changed and the transformation has been forced and I'm not able to do uh, much of that face-to-face type of sales activity right. that done in the past. So, you know, I, I think there's been a merging of the lines of the whole lead gen, demand gen and sales activities. And, and now they're kind of you know, coming together more and more. So, you know, how can I be more effective if I'm now doing more digital and can't take an advantage of much of the, you know, face-to-face type of interactions? Uh, you know, there's a couple of things that are at play. If you've got, let's say you're an entrepreneur and you've got to get your product out there, um, you have to make you have to make decisions from a place of expertise you have to make decisions from a place of success, not from a place of need. And I'm saying that because in order to get your product out there the right way and to have the right look and feel that reflects what you want it to reflect and gives a feeling, right? When you see a Starbucks sign, you have a feeling versus a caribou coffee sign. They, they both give you different feelings. And it's because of the colors and the fonts and things that graphic designers do really well. You've got to spend the money to get that. And you can, you know, good news is you can go out to these wonderful networks like Fiverr and Upwork and, and bid out jobs internationally. And you don't have to go into your pocket for a billion dollars to get some things done. But it's important that everything you do reflects the message that you want to bring. And, and that comes across when you're writing, it's understanding how to write really well and write in a way that is congruent with your message and your style and your product. And then there's the colors, the fonts, the feel, all of that stuff is important to get yourself across, you know, in your digital platform. When I was, uh, if I go back a year ago and I had used a person to post my social media stuff and every week when I wrote my blog, I would find a picture that I thought was appropriate to the blog and I would go on to Google and make sure it was a high res picture, make sure that the usage rights were in line and I could use it. And I would send it to her and she would put it with the blog. Um, My oldest daughter is a graphic designer. She looked at myself and said, this is awful. What are you doing? 
And I'm like, I don't understand. What do you mean it's awful? It's, you know, I, I've got a high res picture. It goes perfectly with the mood of the book. She's like, no, this is not branding who you are. It's not congruent with who you are. So for the last six months or so, she took that over. And, and if you take a look at my blog and all of the pictures that go with the blog, they're, they're similar. You get the same feeling. You know, it's, that's why McDonald's doesn't have a different sign in Arkansas than they do in California. It's consistency of brand and product. So anyway, maybe a little bit long-winded, but don't be afraid to spend the money to make sure that what you can't do personally, you can bring as much of that to your digital campaigns as possible, as much of the personality of yourself, your product, your company as you can. And you do that through color, font, feel, et cetera. Okay, so now that's a very interesting point that you bring up. So a lot of times we talk about a disconnect between marketing and sales. Mm -hmm. So if, if what I'm interpreting, what you're saying is that I have to be make, making sure that if I am in a marketing role and I'm helping to create the brand and, and all of those elements that are associated with lead gen and demand gen, that I even need to extend that onto my salespeople. So I, I can't stop right there. If I want to make the connection and build the bridge, I have to help them to be more congruent. So when, if I have a process of things getting passed over, you know, from, Hey, this is no longer in lead. It's now, you know, something that is a, uh, has to go to further down the funnel and we have to start engaging from that perspective. Otherwise somebody may say, Hey, wait a minute. Something doesn't feel right here. Something isn't right. You know, you're, I'm getting this message and this brand and this, you know, type of connection and feeling, and then it just switched on me. Right, right. Uh, if the marketing message is, hey, we care about you and we want you to bring you into the family, and the sales message is sign here right now, those things are going to be at odds with one another. You know, the entire process needs to be congruent, and that's with any company, and it's about forming a culture, which is an enormously difficult thing to do, to form a great culture, but it, it it comes from a, a bunch of different components. And as you just pointed out really well, if your marketing and your sales messages are the same, you know, you're going to go a lot further and, and, and even after sale, right? So that the idea of great customer service and call centers and things like that, you know, even though it's an automated attendant, how do you feel when you call American Express? Have you had that experience? I mean, I call American Express and I go, oh, they're going to take care of this right away. Not a problem. And it's an automated attendant. But I call another big company like my local utility company and I, you know, because I'm having a problem with my Fios or, you know, my, my cable line. And as soon as the automated attendant comes on, I go, oh my God, this is never going to get done. What's the difference? It's the tone. It's the sound. It's the what buttons to push for what reason, it's the language. You know, you can create atmosphere with AI, you can create atmosphere physically, there's a million different ways to do it, but understanding what is it, what's the feeling that you want the person receiving the message to get? And you've got to remember that throughout everything that you do. Okay, so I mean, when you start looking at, you know, things that I need to pay attention to and things that I need to focus in on, and you may have already answered this to some degree, but you know, we all have constraints that we have to work in in regards to budgets. And so there's a lot of things that are part of our overall budget. And if, if you were to say, you know, really, you know, you need to move some things and focus in on this. I mean, our world has changed, right? Um, right. Where, would, where would I potentially reallocate funds to um, and maybe pull away from? Well, that's a tough one. I mean, the world has become digital and I would spend as much money as I had to spend on creating as personal a connection I could through all of my digital pipes as possible. And I think, you know, again, this is what my book is about. Um, it's even though it's a lot about physical sales and being out in the field in sales, it's about connection. And in today's world where I could, you know, I could practically point and click to buy a luxury yacht, what, what do I need a marketer for? What do I need salespeople for? What, what function are we performing if not to make people feel good about the business that we have? To me, that's the crux of it all. I buy from people I trust. I buy from people I like. 
I buy from people who make it easy for me. And I buy, yesterday, my wife said to me, we have a problem with this machine in the house. I think it's the power supply. I want to get another <laughs> one. Um, it's 300 bucks, whatever, but I'm concerned that I don't know if I could send it back. I said, buy it on Amazon. She's like, okay, but I didn't see it. I said, it's Amazon. So that, don't be, right, that's the feeling I get from Amazon. If I buy it and it's not right, I'll send it back. And they've proven that. They've cared about me over and over and over. And, and that's what has to happen. So whether it's, you know, people talk about Zappos and the customer experience. I'm, I'm a big fan of Amazon's customer experience. And they do it all digitally. I'm not on the phone with anybody from Amazon but I feel cared for. It's instant. My answers are, not, are right there. I'm not worried about it as opposed to calling my cable company and feeling like I'm going to be on the phone for an hour with somebody who doesn't quite understand what I'm saying. And at the end of it, I may still be left wanting. Well, I think that's really important to look at that entire ecosystem. I often talk about the three pillars. Like we have the whole marketing and lead gen and demand gen side. We have the sales side. But then we also have to have the client success and the, and, the, and the client retention and customer retention and customer success, whatever you want to call it. And oftentimes I have discussions with organizations that have awareness on the first two, but often forget the third. Right, right. And it's, it's unfortunate that some people forget the third intentionally because of budget constraints but it's to me it's the uh, the after sale experience is the most important part of my business it's it's what i deliver and did you feel that i i delivered it and do i continue to reach out to you and make sure that i'm doing the right thing am i looking for problems because this is what i did in every business i was ever in and it's to me that's the most important part of the sale because those people will buy from me again and again and again and they'll tell a lot of other people again and again and again that they had a great experience with me. And the opposite side of that is when you don't do that, boy, bad news travels fast. And those people will be your anti-marketers. Okay, so to kind of sum these things up, and I'm sure we made this point and you have made this point in a couple different places, but let's sum it up. Meaning that, all right, I don't have any constraints. I have unlimited budget. I can do whatever the heck I want, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so where would you advise people to actually make their investments in in order to be that disruptor and to make a dis difference as a digital marketer? Oof, that's a tough question. It, I, I have to qualify and say it depends a bit on your product. I find that, for example, uh, when I advertise my book on Instagram and I have great I hired a professional artist and they took wonderful pictures and created beautiful ads and you know, 1500 people like it, but nobody buys it. Instagram crowd likes nice pictures and they, they are somebody's buying uh, community, but they're not mine. My buying community lives in LinkedIn. So I think you got to know where your community lives and then, if I had an unlimited budget, I would spend it on creating my tribe. I would spend all of my money on creating um, a community of people, like-minded people, that we all are looking for the same kinds of outcomes. Because once I've got that community built, then the products that I have to market go out to these thousands and thousands of people who A, like them because we're in the same community, and B, will tout them because they're of the same mindset. So I'd say if I had unlimited budget, I would build community. Well, I think there's some really important questions just as by having, um, you know, the opportunity to meet with you and to talk about your book and to talk about, you know, what your, where your passions are. Um, however, I think we have to kind of really reflect and self-reflect because it's an important component, even with all of what you're talking about. I have to now self-reflect even as an individual to say, you know, how do I make sure I align? How do I make sure that I, you know, pass the torch even uh, within, you know, the actual, um, you know, customer acquisition and retention flow. Um, so what is one important question that B2B digital marketers need to be asking themselves today? Uh, do I believe in my product? And does my belief, passion and authenticity come across as I reach out to bring people to my product? Tell us why. Give us a little bit more insight into that. I don't think there's, listen, if we're in a conversation 
and we're out in the world and we're one-on-one -on -one and we're in a conversation. Um, and as I'm talking to you, Jim, I keep looking over your shoulder at the NBA game that's on one of the ubiquitous televisions that I, you know, I can't even go to a, a bathroom anymore without a monitor blaring something at me. So we have all these disruptors around us. Imagine we're talking and I just keep, my phone keeps dinging and I keep looking at what popped up on Twitter. And I'm saying that because in a one-on-one -on -one conversation, it's 100% about listening intense, intently and really well in NLP, what we call uptime which means I'm 100% focused on you. I'm watching you, I'm listening to you, I'm actively listening. I'm nodding where a nod is appropriate, I'm giving a soft touch where a touch is appropriate, I'm grunting where a grunt is appropriate, I'm responding with, I'm totally in it for you and listening. It's the same thing when you're going out uh, digitally and why I say that that authenticity is so important because you know nobody ever felt, um, you know, nobody ever says, gee, I, I, I hate Jim. All he does is listen to me. <laughs> People want to be understood. And when you bring sincerity to your message and congruity to your message, your public will feel understood. And you've got to always remember it's about others. It's, it's always about others. So if you're aligned and congruent with your message and everything that you're, that's going out there, there's no, there's no trickery. There's no crazy hooks that aren't real. You know, it's, you've just got to be authentic and sincere and really care about the people you're bringing in and believe that what, what you have is good for them. You know, you talked about Tony Robbins. In my book, I have four experts that I cite, uh, one of whom is Debbie Costa, number one salesperson, Tony Robbins International. Tremendous, a force of nature, this woman. Fantastic. And what she says to me throughout the book, it, you know, when I ask her questions, it's always about her listening well to what someone else needs and her true desire that she can help somebody to become their better self through the things that she brings to market. And that's why she does so well. Her motivation is spot on. Okay. So when I th start thinking about, you know, the, your, your book and even that example, and you talk about fighting, you know, citing, um, you know, four folks within the book, uh, if you could give us a little bit of understanding of the constructs and frameworks of uh, your your book. Well, it's it's B two B is really P two P, meaning don't forget about people um, because people do business with people. People do business with people they like, and they do business with people they trust. We've heard this over and over, right? So my examples in the book, I I try to teach people some basic things that it seems to me are being forgotten. So the example of like whatever conversation you're in, being totally in it, meeting somebody for the first time, what is that like? You know, there are NLP components about meeting a, another human being face to face. Have you ever met anybody, Jim, that you just didn't like? Most definitely. Okay. In that moment, you may not know what it was you didn't like about him. You just, somebody, you know, the phrase rub me the wrong way. Did it actually rub you? <laughs> somebody rubbed you the wrong way, right? So what happened? I give people like six steps on how to meet somebody physically in person to avoid that. And it could have been they were slightly turned away from you. They led with their shoulder when they said hello. They didn't make eye contact. There was no smile. It could have been their handshake was inappropriately hard or soft. It could have been they forgot your name three seconds after you get it. I don't, it could have been a host of things. But these little things that I teach in the book about how to relate to human beings, because I felt like the time to write it was now, because I'm so addicted to my electronics. I love my phone. I love that little computer in my pocket. I'm, I'm reaching for it constantly. I study language on it. I read my books on it. I send my emails on it. I give, give me myself reminders on it. It's fantastic. And I... I think it's interrupting a bit of what we need to do as people because we've got some of this stuff, you know, in our lizard brain, as they say, hardwired in from caveman times, and it doesn't go away. So people are still looking at you, judging you, feeling you, thinking about you with all of the tools and senses that they have. And we seem to be drifting further away from ensuring that what we give matches well with those tools and senses. Yeah, I think that's a great point. Uh it's not being self-absorbed, it's being absorbed in them. Mm. 
So Frank, I've really had a great time chatting with you today. How can the B2B DM gang get in touch with you? Well, my website is easy. It's frank at franksoma.com, S-O-M-M-A. The book's on Amazon, really easy to get there. Um, and, you know, the website has my offerings, whether it's a keynote talk virtually or popping into somebody's sales meeting or group coaching one-on-one, -on -one, you know, those are all the things that I do now. Frank Soma, thanks for sharing your knowledge and wisdom, and we wish you the very best. Thank you, sir. It was a pleasure to be with you. Thank you for joining us. Go now to join the B2B DM gang in the B2B Marketer LinkedIn group, where you can connect with other B2B DM disruptors and get access to our B2B DM cheat sheets, checklist, and guides. While you're at it, if you found value in this show, please help by going to iTunes to rate, review, and subscribe. And share the show on all of your digital platforms. Be sure to tune in next week for our next episode. And always remember, you can automate your lead capture, but you must lure your lead. <laughs>